Spotlight. This is Art Cortonell reading Don Pierce's Bible Prophecy in today's World News. This is part three in our series. Welcome to Spotlight, Bible Prophecy on World News. We concluded our previous Bible Spotlight by seeing the steps which are strengthening the papacy. Before turning to the new Pope, let's see why we are so interested in these matters. Scripture is clear about the latter-day power of the papacy. We quote, And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of heaven and the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Revelation chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. So it is clear at the time of the end, as confirmed by the next two verses, there are three powers responsible for drawing the nations down into Israel, where the invading armies will be destroyed at Armageddon. So it is clear that these powers are strong and influential. The title, False Prophet, is appropriate for the religious system of our day. The Vatican claims to speak for God. That the Pope is God's mouthpiece. That God has appointed him to this office. All claims we know to be false. It was in fact Peter himself that warned that false prophets would arise from within the Ecclesia who, as in the days of Judah and Israel in Old Testament times, would lead believers into false ways. Quote, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, whom privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. 2 Peter 2 Verse 1. It was Paul who wrote, wrote to the Thessalonian believers about the man of sin who would arise out of the true ecclesia to set up an apostate religion. Quote, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is God, all that is worshipped, so that he is as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And then shall that wicked man be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, 4 and 8 to 11. So this false teaching would continue down the ages until it is destroyed by the Lord Jesus at his coming. This is described in Revelation 19 verse 20, quote, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophets that wrought the miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them which worshipped his image. This agrees with what we learn in Revelation chapter 17 that after the defeat of the dragon power, Russia, on the mountains of Israel as described in Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 and other places, Europe, the beast, railed by the harlot woman of Revelation chapter 17, or the false prophet, continues to resist Christ's insistence on submission to his rule from Jerusalem. We know from the countries listed in Ezekiel chapters 38 that the Christian nations of Europe join forces with Russia to invade Israel and continue the resistance for many years afterward until crushed by Christ. The presence of Israel in their land has been a great thorn 
to the Vatican concepts of the place of the Jew in the purpose of God. We will come back to this aspect. But what is clear is that the papacy has a big role to play in uniting Christendom against Israel and then against the returned Lord Jesus, who, having saved Israel, established his kingdom in Jerusalem. So we expect to see a revival of the influence of the Vatican. In Milestones 2011 and 2012, we looked at two prophecies in Daniel that speak of the reflourishing of Babylon. The banded tree of chapter 4 and the writing on the wall of chapter 5. Babylon the Great is to be a power in these last days. It is clear that Benedict was too old to play this role for the rebuilder of the Vatican's power. At 85 his work was done. He was, as we have remarked, the oldest pope to be elected for over 260 years. He was regarded as a caretaker pope, one who could begin a work and then be replaced by a younger person. However, the choice they have made in Pope Francis is of another elderly man, only two years younger than Benedict had been. Another caretaker pope? Perhaps he is thought to be a suitable choice to clean up the Vatican hierarchy and then perhaps step down. If we look at the end time, we can see that there is considerable time period before to be filled. Should our master come back tonight to his household it could be 10 years before the battle of Armageddon with the invasion of Israel a year or two before then. Then there is the role of Revelation chapter 17 after Armageddon when a Catholic led Europe resists the challenge of Christ's call to submission to himself as Israel's newly established king. Pope Francis would be as old as Benedict is now, so it is reasonable to expect that the world will, in the not too distant future again, be watching the pageantry of another Pope being chosen. So what does Francis bring to the role of papacy? Well, that must be the subject of our next Bible Spotlight. Speak to you soon. This has been Art Cortonell reading Don Pierce's Spotlights. Bible prophecy in today's world news. Join us again next time for part four when we consider further how Bible prophecy is being fulfilled by world news today.